we want to evaluate the limits. We have the limit of the square root of the quantity 9x squared plus x minus 3x as x approaches infinity. Notice for the second limit we have x approaches negative infinity. First notice how as x approaches infinity, the square root of the quantity 9x squared plus x approaches infinity. And then we have minus 3x, which also approaches infinity as x approaches infinity. So right now the limit is in the form of infinity minus infinity, which is not equal to zero. This is an indeterminate form. So we'll have to perform some algebra on the function to hopefully then determine the limit. So what we'll do is write the expression for the function as a fraction with the denominator of one, and then multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate. The conjugate is the square root of the quantity nine x squared plus x plus three x. Multiplying the conjugates, multiplying the conjugates, when we multiply the two square roots, we get nine x squared plus x. The sum of the next two products will be zero, and the last product is negative three x times positive three x, which gives us minus nine x squared. The denominator is the square root of the quantity nine x squared plus x plus three x. Notice the numerator simplifies. Nine x squared minus nine x squared is zero. We now have x divided by the square root of the quantity nine x squared plus x plus three x. If we try to find the limit in this form, we have the indeterminate form of infinity divided by infinity. So now we use a strategy that we used before. We will divide every term by the highest power of x in the denominator which in this case will be x. Notice how we do have an x squared under the square root, but the square root of x squared is equal to x. It's actually the absolute value of x, but since x is approaching positive infinity, we know x is positive. This idea will be important in just a moment. So we're gonna divide everything by x. Simplifying, the numerator is one, in the denominator, when we divide the square root by x, we want to bring the x under the square root, and therefore we divide by x squared under the square root. So we have the square root of nine x squared divided by x squared plus x divided by x squared. And then we still have plus three x divided by x simplifies to three. And now let's simplify under the square root. We have the square root of nine x squared divided by x squared is nine, plus x divided by x squared simplifies to one over x, and then we have plus three. And now we can find the limit in this form. So the given limit is equal to the limit of one divided by the sum of the square root of the quantity nine plus one divided by x and three. As x approaches infinity, the only thing affected by x is one divided by x, which approaches zero as x approaches infinity, which gives us one divided by the sum of the square root of nine and three. The square root of nine is equal to three, giving us one divided by the sum of three and three, which is equal to one-sixth. The limit is equal to one-sixth. And now let's take a look at the second limit. The only difference again is x is approaching negative infinity. If we focus on just the square root, we can ignore the plus x because the nine x squared overpowers the x as x approaches negative infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, for nine x squared, we square the negative value, which becomes positive, and then multiply by nine, which indicates as x approaches negative infinity, the square root is approaching positive infinity. And then we have minus three x. Three x approaches negative infinity, as x approaches negative infinity, the limit is in the form of infinity minus negative infinity, which simplifies to infinity plus infinity, and therefore the limit approaches positive infinity. So for this limit, no extra algebra is required. We can determine the limit approaches positive infinity by analyzing the original function. I hope you found this helpful.